Good morning, everyone. I am Mr. Coleman, and today we're going to talk about the geographic features of Mexico, Central America, and the Caribbean islands. Here's our learning objectives for today. Today I will learn about the geographic features of Mexico, Central America, and the Caribbean, so I can identify their features on a map and learn their differences. I know I have it when I can tell my family and friends about other wonderful places outside of the United States. Mexico, along with Central America, joins the continents of North America and South America with a physical feature called a land bridge. A land bridge is a strip of land that connects two larger land masses, enabling migration of plants and animals to both areas. There are a variety of landforms in Mexico that support large communities of people. The western side of Mexico is part of the Ring of Fire, a hot spot of seismic activity. So if we take a look at the map, we notice there are three mountains, the Sierra Madre Occidental, the Central Plateau, and also the Sierra Madre Oriental. Okay, here's another map that shows the land bridge. So you have one that is actually going into North America, I'm sorry, South America from Central America. The other one is going from pretty much Florida also into Central America. The Mexican Plateau. So the Mexican Plateau is where most people live because of mild, fertile, and rainfall. 
It lies between two mountain ranges, the Sierra Madre Oriental, which is on the east, and Sierra Madre Occidental, which is on the west. Now here's a picture of the Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire, also referred to as the Circum Pacific Belt, is a path along the Pacific Ocean characterized by active volcanoes and frequent earthquakes. The majority of Earth's volcanoes and earthquakes take place along the Ring of Fire. Its length is approximately 40,000 kilometers, which equals to 24,900 miles. It traces boundaries between several tectonic plates, including the Pacific, Juan de Fuca, Cocos and in Indian Australia, Nazca, North America, and the Philippine plates. 75% of Earth's volcanoes, more than 450 volcanoes, are located along the Ring of Fire. 90% of Earth's earthquakes occur along its path, including the planet's most violent and dramatic seismic events. So Northern Mexico has a dry climate with few permanent waterways. Okay, so the water systems in Mexico are, Northern Mexico has a dry climate with few permanent waterways, as I mentioned. The Lerma, Lerma River is one of Mexico's most important rivers. The Gulf of Mexico, which we learned about in our studies of the United States and Canada. So the Gulf of Mexico is along Mexico's East Coast and is home to a, rare, a wide variety of sea life. The Gulf of California on the western side of Mexico supports marine life such as whales, sea turtles, and sharks. So the Lerma River is one of Mexico's most important rivers. It is the second longest river in Mexico. Since the Lerma is one of the largest perennial waterways serving the densely populated southern portion of Central America Plateau, it is used extensively for drinking water, irrigation, and hydroelectric electric power. Water diversion from the Lerma began during the colonial period to irrigate the important wheat and cornfields of the Bajajo and breadbasket of Mexico. And here's a look of the Rio Grande River. The Rio Grande River in Spanish is called Rio Grande del Norte or Rio Bravo or Rio Bravo del Norte is the fifth longest river of North America and the 20th longest in the world, forming the border between the U.S. state of Texas and Mexico. Rising as a clear snow-fed mountain stream more than 12,000 feet, that's 3,700 meters above sea level in the Rocky Mountains, the Rio Grande descends across steeps and deserts, watering rich agricultural regions as it flows on its way to the Gulf of Mexico. The total length of the river is about 1,900 miles. Lake Chapala is uh, in west central Mexico. It lies between the Mexican plateau at 6,000 feet above sea level in the states of Jalisco and Mashoca. Chapala is Mexico's largest lake, measuring approximately 48 miles east-west by 10 miles north-south and covering an area of 417 square miles. Now let's take a look at the Gulf of Mexico. It is a geographic area and a body of water that forms the so-called third coast of the contiguous United States. The Gulf of Mexico is surrounded on the United States side by coastlines of western and northern Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Texas. In Mexico, the Gulf is bordered by the states of Tamaulipas, Veracruz, Tabasco, Campeche, and Yucatan. The western end of the island of Cuba forms a partial barrier to the eastern Gulf of Mexico, where it joins the Caribbean Sea. So the Yucatan Peninsula is a popular tourist destination. These pictures that you see here on the screen, of course, besides the, the map picture, are pictures that I actually took when I was on vacation in Yucatan. Um, I visited Cancun, Yucatan, and another uh, part of Mexico, but I really can't remember. Remember. But uh, for some strange reason, um, they like to call me Shaq everywhere we went in Mexico, but guess because I'm tall. 
Maybe I'm too short. I don't know. But Yucatan, also known as Estado, is in southeastern Mexico. It occupies part of the northern Yucatan Peninsula. It is bounded to the north by the Gulf of Mexico, to the east and southeast by the state of Quintana Roo, and to the southwest and west by the state of Campeche. The state capital and chief commercial center is Merida. The Gulf of California on the western side of Mexico supports marine life such as whales, sea turtles, and sharks. Climate bombs and resources. Three factors that influence Mexico's climates are regional high pressure systems, northeast trade winds, and vertical, vertical climate zones. Vertical climate zones occur as elevation decreases. Mexico has a variety of biomes that support various plant and animal life. Minerals, especially silver, are important to Mexico's economy. Mexico is a leading petroleum producing country. Okay, as we are looking at this graph, you notice that the higher we get in elevation, the colder it gets. The Tierra Caliente is where we would see the rainforest along with vegetation. The Tierra Templada is where we would see the most population along with wheat, coffee, and corn. Next, we have the Tierra Fria, which is considered the highest zone in Central America. And lastly, the Tierra Jalada and Tierra Nevada, which is either freezing or snow. Mexico has a variety of bombs that support various plant and animal life. Again, so as you see on the map, we have several, several different colors, okay? We have the tropical evergreen forest, tropical semi-deciduous forest, tropical deciduous forest, thyme forest, grassland, xeric scrubland, coniferous forest, cloud forest, and wetland. Mexico's rich mining industry dates back more than 500 years and continues today, making it a best prospect industry sector for the United States and their companies. Mexico's total production of mining and mineral products accounted for over $12.69 billion in 2019. From turquoise seas to magnificent Maya ruins, lush cloud forests, and bustling markets, Central America can be as chilled out or as thrilling as you wish. Covering eight countries with more than 300 volcanoes, lost jungle temples, the world's second largest coral reef, and a fascinating culture shaped by indigenous, Spanish, and African influences, Central America makes for a pretty big playground. The region's most cosmopolitan capital, Panama City is both vibrant metropolis and gateway to tropical escapes with a skyline of shimmering glass and refreshing anything goes attitude. This is the Caribbean dream. Enjoy white sand beaches, diving with whale sharks, and surf fresh seafood all on a backpacking budget. This alternately placid and turbulent lake is ringed by volcanoes and villages and is the ideal spot for some paragliding, kayaking, and enjoying the thriving indigenous culture. Known for its buzzing weekend party scene, world-class beaches, and international mix of visitors, you can lose the crowds on its western reaches and even watch sea turtles hatching. While technically located in North America, the massive El Castillo Pyramid is a convenient stop if you're traveling the Central American Isthmus. The site will knock your socks off, especially at the spring and autumn equinoxes when the sunlight casts a shadow of a feathered serpent on the staircase. But if you can't make it then, it will still impress, a testament to one of the most brilliant pre-Hispanic civilizations in Latin America. Now let's talk about the wonderful Central America and the Caribbean. Central America is a narrow bridge of land south of Mexico that includes seven countries. Belize, Costa Rica, I'm sorry, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, and Panama. The Caribbean consists of a chain of 
archipelago of many islands in the Caribbean Sea, an arm of the Atlantic Ocean. An, an archipelago is a chain of many islands. Although Central America is made up of seven countries, it is smaller in size than the state of Texas. The Pacific Ocean lies to the west and the Caribbean Sea lies to the east. So we see the Pacific Ocean, we see the Caribbean Sea, and right here is Central America. Central America is generally considered part of the continent of North America, but it is often referred to as its own region. Central America is a narrow isthmus that is bordered by North America and the Gulf of Mexico to the north and by the South America to the south. To the east of Central America is the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean is to the west. Important mountainous areas are the Sierra Madre in Guatemala and Mexico, the Mapa Mountains in Belize and Guatemala, the, Mon the Montanus de Campagua of Honduras, the Cordillera Isabella of Nicaragua, the Cordillera Talamanca of Costa Rica, in Panama is the Cordillera Central. Important bodies of water include Logo de Nicaragua, Golfo de Fonseca, Golfo de Nicoya, and Golfo de Panama. And then, okay, so as we look at the map, we see Golfo de Fonseca, or the Gulf of Fonseca, Lake Nicaragua, Gulf of Nicaya, Gulf of Chiriqua, Gulf of Panama, Panama Canal, Mosquito Gulf, okay? And here's the Gulf of Honduras toward the top. At the southernmost end of Central America is the Isthmus of Panama. The Isthmus at its narrowest point measures only about 30 miles wide. Near this point of the Panama Canal, a heavily made waterway cuts through the Isthmus and links the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean. The Panama Canal is important because it enables ships to greatly shorten their voyage from one ocean to another. And as you see, the red line is considered the Panama Canal, okay? Now, as we take a look at this map, we notice there are three groups of islands that make up the Caribbean. You have the Bahamas, the Greater Antiles, and the Lesser Antiles. So we have the Greater Antiles, the Lesser Antiles, and the Bahamas. So out of the four islands, there's Cuba, Hispaniola, Jamaica, and Puerto Rico. Cuba is the largest of the four islands. Um, it's about the size of Tennessee, only 90 miles south of Florida, it includes 1,600 other smaller islands. Varied landscape, mountains, hills, rolling plains, wide, fertile valleys, and rainforests. Hispaniola is covered by Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Puerto Rico is the smallest island in the Greater Antile and is about the size of Delaware. So we see Cuba, Jamaica, Haiti, Dominican Republic, and Puerto Rico. And of course, right here are the Bahamas. Okay, so here is a map of the Lesser Antiles. It's southeast of Puerto Rico, divided into two groups the Leeward Islands and the Windward Islands. The Windward Islands include Martinique, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and the St. Grenadines, and Grenada, while the Leeward Islands include the U.S. Virgin Islands, British Virgin Islands, Anguilla, St. Martin, St. Bart's, Saba, St. Eustatius, St. Kitts, and Nevis, Antigua, and Barbuda, Montserrat, Guadalupe, and Dominica. And the Leeward Antiles, also known as the ABC Islands, off the coast of South America are Aruba, Bainer, and Caracua. The Bahamas are the northmost group of islands in the Caribbean. They are only 50 miles off the eastern coast of Florida, made up of about 700 islands and 2,400 caves. Hayes are small, low-lying islands made of sand, limestone, and coral. Coral 
is a hard, stony substance made up of skeletons of many tiny sea animals. Okay, we see the K and we see coral. Of the 700 islands in the Bahamas, people live on only about 20. Grand Bahama and New Providence is two of those islands. Vegetation, Mexico, Central America, and the Caribbean. Desert scrub, which is Mexico, low growing grasses. Mountains are in Mexico and Central America. So in Mexico, there's mixed forests in the Central America, short grasses and shrubs. Temporary grasslands. In Mexico, there are plateaus, which is long grasses. Central America, West Coast. Caribbean and Cuba, West Coast. Tropical rainforests. In Mexico, coastal plains of South. Central America, Central regions and East Coast. And the Caribbean, majority of their islands. So class, what did we learn today?